dear students one of the important part of applied microbiology is of air microbiology and we are going to learn this topic through the series of two videos this is the first video and in this we are going to discuss introduction to the air microbiology sources of microorganisms in the air as well as some important definitions like infectious dust droplets and droplet nuclei and the second video will be on the sampling methods for the microbiological examination of air in that i will discuss solid impaction technique by the use of sieve device and liquid impaction technique by the use of bead bubbler device so now we will proceed for the discussion on introduction to the air microbiology so students all of we know that air is the general name for the mixture of gases that makes up the earth's atmosphere it is a mixture of about 78% nitrogen 28% oxygen 0.9% argon 0.04% carbon dioxide and a very small amounts of other gases besides this air also contains the variable amounts of water vapors and the air microbiology is concerned with the study of living microorganisms which are suspended in the air these microorganisms are usually referred to as bio aerosols the air or atmosphere is actually unsuitable for the growth of microorganisms due to extreme temperature variations solar radiations lack of nutrients low amount of available water etc therefore the number of microorganisms in the air is less than the other natural environments like oceans or soil however there is still a large enough number of microorganisms in the air so that they can affect the atmosphere the microorganisms in the air have an opportunity to travel long distances with the help of wind the microorganisms in air are ecologically significant because they can be associated with diseases in the humans animals and plants usually most of these organisms are found in the lower region of the atmosphere the atmosphere is usually occupied by those forms of microorganisms that are resistant to the adverse conditions in the air these forms of microorganisms can be bacterial spores or cysts or the capsulated bacteria or fungal spores or enveloped viruses in the study of air microbiology it is necessary to understand what are the sources of microorganisms in air the origin of the microorganisms in the air takes place through various ways most airborne bacteria originate from the natural sources such as the soil lakes ocean animals and humans many unnatural origins are also known and those are sewage treatment plants animal rendering fermentation processes and agricultural activities which disturb the soil soil is one of the important sources of microorganisms to the air whenever the wind blows it disturbs the soil surface and liberates the soil microorganisms into the air these microorganisms remain suspended in the air for long time another way of transferring microorganisms to the air is by man made actions like plugging and digging the microorganisms from plant and animal surfaces are also transferred by the air currents 
The large water bodies like oceans and bays is another important source of microorganisms in the air. The microorganisms from these sources can be released in the form of water droplets or aerosols which are produced by wind or tidal actions at the surfaces of these water bodies. The most of the droplets are produced from top 0.1 mm water surfaces that is called as micro layer. It consists of many more microorganisms than from deep layers. The bubbles from the surfaces of water bodies also adds thousands of microorganisms into the air. But the most significant source of microorganisms in the air is the man himself. The organisms from oral, nasal, rectal passages of man and animals come in the air. These are discharged through human activities like coughing, sneezing, laughing and even talking. Such biological aerosols may spread bacteria up to a distance of about 15 feet. The infected persons release large number of pathogens into the air. The respiratory pathogens are drought resistant and can survive in air for long period of time. Air in the hospital also is a site where microbial load is always very high. Many human infections are caused by microorganisms from such atmosphere. For example, some epidemics of Legionnaire's disease were due to aerosols generated from the contaminated water of air conditioning equipments. Besides this, aerosols formed by the high-speed drills in the dental clinics also add a large number of bacteria in the air. Not only a man or man-made activities add the microorganisms in the air, but also various industrial, agricultural, Municipal plants are responsible for the generation of bioaerosols. For example, sprinkler irrigation of crops and forest land with effluent from sewage treatment plants, trickling filter beds in sewage treatment plants, slaughterhouses, as well as spray washing processes are responsible for the generation of bioaerosols. Like that of the sources of microorganisms in the air, in the topic of air microbiology, it is important to understand the definitions of certain terms like infectious dust, droplets and droplet nuclei. So what is infectious dust? The dust in air arises from various sources like sand, soil, ash, lint from bedding, clothing and carpets. It usually contains all saprophytic microorganisms. The dust loaded with saprophytic organisms is harmless for human health, but if it is loaded with airborne pathogens, then it is called as infectious dust. The airborne pathogens are added to the dust by body secretions. And when the secretions are dried, pathogens remain in dust and form the infectious dust. The human body secretions like nasal or throat secretions on the handkerchief eventually dry and leave some residual material. Similarly, during sneezing or coughing, the large aerosol droplets get expelled and they settle on the floor or bed cloths. The moisture content of these droplets evaporates leaving behind the residue. These residues are then distributed during the handling of handkerchiefs, sweeping of floor, bed making which makes the dust infectious and if it is inhaled by healthy persons, they may get infected. So the infectious dust is the dust which is containing the pathogenic microorganisms. The next important term is droplets. The sneezing and cupping activity of respiratory tract infection persons expel millions of micro droplets of saliva and mucus along with large number of microorganisms. Such particles are called as droplets. Thus, the droplets contain thousands of living microorganisms along with saliva and the mucus. Most of the droplets are larger in size, that means their average size is 0.1 mm in diameter. 
such larger droplets settle rapidly within shorter distance from their source of origin before drying even if such droplets are inhaled by a healthy person before their settling they are immediately trapped in nasal wafers and in the nasopharynx material and they are prevented from reaching up to the lungs thus the droplets are not that much dangerous as far as the spread of infection is concerned and one more important term is the droplet nuclei in the warm and dry atmosphere the small droplets are dried due to the evaporation of moisture content leaving behind dried mucus with the live bacteria and they are called as droplet nuclei the droplet nuclei are very much small in size with diameter less than 0.1 mm such light weighted droplet nuclei can remain in the air for long period of time that is up to certain hours to days and the dried mucus which is present in these particles protects the organisms present at the center such droplet nuclei are also carried away to a longer distance and if these droplet nuclei are inhaled by healthy persons they directly enter into the lungs without capturing in mechanical traps of nasal wafers and mucus of the nasopharynx and the organisms from droplet nuclei directly settle in the alveoli of the lungs the chance of spread of infection via droplet nuclei increases when the peoples are crowded together due to this the frequency of airborne infection is more in winter when people prefer to live in crowded places in the modern days the chances of spreading infection are increased because of modern urban areas like buses aeroplanes restaurants and bars which are always crowded the diseases caused by klebsiella pneumoniae streptococcus pneumoniae and mycobacterium tuberculosis may spread through such droplet nuclei so this is about the introduction to the air microbiology sources of microorganisms in air and some important definitions like infectious dust droplets and droplet nuclei So this was the first video on the topic of air microbiology. In the next video, we will discuss the sampling methods for the microbiological examination of air. So keep on watching my videos. Thank you for your kind listening. Thank you.